everybody. It's been a minute, hasn't it? We've been on the road. We've been here, there, and everywhere. And right now, Rob, the Chrome Dome half of the Handmade Heralds, is out playing in the park with some friends. So I'm going to play in the apartment with some friends. I took over Rob's desk for this here video. So let's try to get you acquainted with my sewing family before he gets back. Okay, let's go. Today, I'm answering the question, what do you sew with? I get asked this question all the time on the channel and I haven't answered it because the answer is really not just one machine. It's many and varied machines and there are pros and cons to all of them. And I don't want to say, uh, be all end all, I sew on this machine and that's the machine that you guys should sew on because really you need to find what fits you. Is it vintage? Is it new? Is it a mix of both? For me, that's gonna be both because these are just some of the machines that I have. And by some, I mean I have one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, eight machines. I see you're judging and I raise you whatever is hiding in your closet that you don't willingly put on YouTube and out yourself to the world about. I've got a mixed bag of vintage and new in my menagerie. Let me introduce them. Recar 2600 Super Stretch, also known as Ricky Ricardo. And then we've got his mate, the Faf Tiptronic 1171 Lucille Baller, because she is the baller. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Then we're moving into the newer realm with the Faf Creative Pro, Gorgeous George. I don't know why his name is George, but he is gorgeous. And last but not least, the Bernina 535 Bernina Simone. Rob actually named the Bernina Simone. And I think it fits because she's a little bit high maintenance. She's a little bit persnickety, and I feel like Nina Simone was also a little persnickety, rightfully so. We'll get into that. Let's start with Ricky Ricardo. Ricky here is my oldest machine in my menagerie, although he was not my first machine. My first machine was a Singer Featherweight 221, and she's down south waiting for me in the Sunset Studio. But Ricky, I found down south in a Goodwill store like just hanging out in a little white suitcase. And that white suitcase was interestingly shaped. And I knew that that white suitcase had some sewing goodness in it. And I was right. He is all metal. He is super heavy. He's got a removable footbed and an awesome, super skinny free arm. Like super skinny. Like make children's clothing super skinny, although that's not happening here. More power to you if, if you're into that, but those little armholes, oof, I can't get into it. He works with cams, right? That little hole in there is so that you can use all of these little sewing cams. You just stick one of these in the hole, that's what she said, and then you're off to the races on any number of stitches, all kinds of decorative stitches on my here Ricky Ricardo. The con, as some would see it, about a machine like this, you have to control the tension and the presser foot pressure. I kind of love that because the machine's not deciding for me what the weight of the fabric is, what it should be doing, how it should be compensating. I've got to figure out on every single fabric that I put under here what the deal should be. And every time I nail it, every time I get that super straight, perfectly balanced stitch, I feel like I have like been given an A plus and made class valedictorian and gotten all of the extra credit because um, I did it myself. The machine didn't do it for me. Now, there are some cons that I do actually think are cons. Ricky does not have a needle up down. He doesn't have an automatic thread cutter. He doesn't have a needle threader. He doesn't have great light. He actually has just this here little light bulb and it doesn't put out a lot of light. That's part of the reason why you don't see me stitching on him, but I love him. He's also super quiet and very easy to maintain. I can fix Ricky myself because I took him to a shop once and they didn't know what they was doing. Like I said, I'm a, I'm a DIY kind of girl all the way around. Handmade Harold's, let's go. 
Ricky did, however, have a couple of issues, which I mentioned before with the fixing. One of them was I sewed over a pin. Uh-huh. The needle hit the pin, the pin went flying, the machine went off the cocta, it ruined the timing. Don't sew over your pins because it will hurt you or the machine, one or the other, someday. When Ricky was out of commission during the time of the sewing over of the pin, I moved on to Miss Lucille Ball over here. Come this way. Oh yeah. I think her name is Lucy, but they all call her Luce. I love Miss Lucille Ball. She's named that because, um, well, there were several reasons when I did it. I can't remember them all, but one of them was she's got this nifty little ball here right on the little needle jammy bar holder thing. I just lost all of my valedictorian points by not knowing what that's actually called. This machine introduced me to the joys of needle up down, automatic threader, a bobbin indicator, although the bobbin indicator doesn't always work because I think something's wrong with the little motherboard because she's got a little bit of a computer motherboard in there, but just a little one. It's not huge. It's not something that's really going to like get in my way were it to quit on me. She's got a lot of stitches that you use with just a little push button here. I love her so much and She's not working at the moment. Do you notice a trend here with my vintage machines? That's one of the cons of vintage machines. They're awesome, but eventually parts start to go bad. And eventually you're not gonna find parts for those machines anymore, or you're gonna have to find duplicates, or you're gonna have to find a service repair person who actually knows what they're doing. Because I'll tell you what, when I brought Ricky in, they did not know what they were doing. Lucille Ball was rescued from a fabulous, fashionable Brooklyn ladies closet. She had kept her in there for like five years. She sewed a children's dress on it and then put it in the closet for five years. Probably the problem was she was sewing for children. Like I said before, all of the little spaces are too small. It's too finky. Luckily for me, that soured her on sewing and she sold it for a hundred dollars on Craigslist because right now, Tiptronics and I've been looking run anywhere from like 600 to a thousand dollars for a vintage tiptronic i can't i don't i don't i lost my words with that i also lost my words when i was first introduced to the amazingness that is idt that stands for integrated dual feed i'm gonna fact check that i'm pretty sure that's what that it stands for this is essentially a little walking foot that is always attached to your machine, but yet doesn't take up like seven inches of real estate like those jobs that you can attach onto your machine usually do. It is just always on here. You can set it to go or you can set it up. Well, normally you can set it to go or you can set it away, but I can't right now because that's also broken on this machine because the spring eventually was too old and it, it just snapped in half. Vintage machines, age. The fabulousness of IDT is what really got me interested in introducing a newer model into my life. And that is where a gorgeous George came in. Let me come in closer to you because this is important. Oh, hi. In 2015, I was one of a handful of creators that was part of the sewing party made by SVP, which is Singer Viking Faf. And we all used a different kind of machine and we all had a different sort of focus. Mine was garment, there was a quilter, there was a crafter. What intrigued me about this relationship was that they gave us the machines. The machines were not loners, cause listen, a lot of these companies that do ambassadorships only loan out the machine to said ambassador. Now let's unpack that. Even if you love the loner, you are essentially creating a mini commercial for free every time you stitch on it, every time you post a picture of it, every time you say a word about it. And that's why I don't showcase brand names of these machines when I'm stitching on them for you guys because I don't wanna influence you in that way. Because I'll tell you what, if you've been stitching for like two or three months, 
gorgeous George here might not be the machine for you. Also, Ricky over here might not be the machine for you because you gotta play with the tension. You gotta play with the pressure. With gorgeous George, you gotta play with a whole computer arsenal of controls. Basically, I don't wanna lead you down the wrong path. I want you to find the machine that's right for you. Hi, George. George does a lot of things beautifully and one thing not so beautifully. Let's start with the cons. He cannot produce a beautiful, perfect, straight stitch. And really when you think about it, don't you want your sewing machine to produce a beautiful, perfect, straight stitch? Well, the reason why George is not, you know, excelling in that area is because he can produce amazing embroidery stitch outs. Of course, the module takes up a whole lot of space. When I bring that puppy out, nothing else is happening except that, unless, you know, Rob goes away and lets me use his desk for a minute, and then I can do other things too. George has a ton of functionality and a ton of needle swing. You can position his needle infinite numbers compared to my vintage machines to the left or right of center. That's because that needle has to swing to stitch out those embroidery patterns and to do all the fancy stitches that he can do. Now, you gotta give up a little to get all of that. If your needle swings past nine millimeters to the left or the right, you're gonna sacrifice that perfectly true, even straight stitch. And for me, as a garment sewist, I gotta have an even straight stitch. When I see a shirt that's top stitched and the top stitching is even a little wonky, I'm going after it with my seam ripper and I'm doing it over again. I got some amazing embroidery out of this machine. That's what I use Gorgeous George for. So if you're looking for a new remodel machine and you're thinking about what you want in it and what you don't want in it, consider the needle swing. You might not want all of the fancier stitches in order to get that beautiful, perfect straight stitch. And that's what my next machine does do. It does do that. It does, come, come. This here is the Bernina 535 Bernina Simone. This is actually the mid to low end of the 500 series because I didn't want to be stitching on something that had a needle swing wider than nine millimeters. Miss Bernina Simone is a little temperamental. However, I do love her. And through the channel Bernina Jeff, he's linked below, he's got a ton of Bernina tips for you. Oh my Yoda, like so many tips. He has saved me so many times with Miss Simone. What happened, Miss Simone? You know, but we have an understanding now. I understand that she needs that drop of oil once a day on the hook. I understand that the threads must be placed just so before you start a seam so that she doesn't suck them all down into the throat plate hole. I understand that her feet are expensive because she's an expensive girl. She's got expensive tastes. I understand that you must wait for her to be ready before you begin a stitch. When you lower that presser foot, she's gonna clear her throat first and then you can go along and stitch. I understand a high maintenance girl. The bed is so large and so tall that when I'm sewing at my standing desk, I'm too short for it. I'm just, I'm about this ratio right here with it. Honestly, I can appreciate so many things about all of my machines here in my menagerie. They all have their pros, they all have their cons, and there is no one perfect machine on my desk. So what do I sew on in the sewing videos you see here on the channel? Well, in many of the videos, I'm sewing on these newer, more expensive jobs because they have really bright LED lighting, they have a lot of a, a bed space, and they have the needle up down function and thread cutters. So that's easier for me when I'm showing things to you guys when I'm demonstrating. I don't always talk about them because I don't think you necessarily need to spend a bunch of money on a machine because behind the scenes, I'm sewing on these guys. Well, not this little lady so much because you know, like I said, she broke. I gotta fix her. I believe that she needs a new belt, and although I have opened her up 
completely. I cannot for the life of me figure out how to get past the hand wheel mechanism into the belt. I can see the belt, I can touch the belt, I can zhuzh the belt, I cannot get the belt out. You gotta go out there, you gotta test out some machines, you gotta see what works for you, and maybe you gotta play a little and have a couple different options. If you wanna see any of the uh, functionality of any of these machines in a future video, holler at me in the comments and you know, I'll see what I can do, see what I can do, whip something up for you because I was not gonna turn on four machines for this video because that's a lot of power output and I'm trying to keep the energy costs down in New York because New York is hella expensive right now. We're gonna see you here next week with a fun little collaboration. It's really cute. And Rob's gonna be there for it too, for like all of it. So come on back now, you hear? I'm a so now. Though I might embroider something now that he's out. So many of you, so many.